Ocean Waves is a weird film. It was directed by Tomomi Machizuki from Studio Ghibli in 1993 and released directly to television. I had never heard of this film until I stumbled across the DVD in a public library and saw the iconic Totoro symbol on the cover. I thought I knew about all the Studio Ghibli films, but apparently not. At the end of this review, I'll tell you what I think the message of this movie is. Also, please let me know what anime film I should watch and review next. So, Ocean Waves is a story about nostalgia and young love. Based on the novel by Seiko Hermuro, Ocean Waves is a rather eventless boy meets girl movie, making it an odd choice for animation. The film starts at a train station in Tokyo, where the main character, Taku, sees a girl who looks like his high school crush, Rikaku. Uh, the trains blur his vision, and from here the story is told as a flashback to high school. Taku's best friend Yutaka is showing Tokyo transfer student Rikaku around the small town of Koshi. Taku teases Yutaka about his love for Rikaku. A love triangle ensues. Rikaku is exceptionally gifted at sports in school. However, she's also prideful and rude. While she appears cool on the surface, her attitude mostly inspires resentment in her classmates, and she has trouble making emotional connections with the other students, so she's a loner. Taku learns that Rikaku is sad about having to leave Tokyo, and that the move is a result of her parents' divorce. Since the movie is told through Taku's perspective, we don't really get to see the full picture of Rikaku's backstory. A lot of her behavior seems insane. She convinces Taku to lend her money and promises to pay him back. She then disappears and never pays him back. Taku learns that she also borrowed money from his best friend Yutaka. After three years, Rikaku finally makes a friend with one of the girls, Yumi. Yumi is sweet, gullible, and innocent, and Rikaku takes advantage of this by inviting her to a trip to a concert, only to use Yumi as a way to get to the airport to go see her dad in Tokyo, using tickets that she already paid for with the money she borrowed earlier from Taku. So Yumi freaks out and calls Taku, and he ends up going to Tokyo with Rikaku to see her dad. Rikako's father was not expecting her, and he has to get a hotel for her and Taku. Uh, it's pretty funny to watch Taku try to sleep in a bathtub as Rikako keeps the hotel bed for herself. The next morning, Rikako kicks Taku out so she can get dressed and meet a boyfriend. By now, it's really hard to find anything likable about the female lead. Even with knowing her troubled life and strained relationships with her parents, Rikaku seems entitled and ungrateful, and her attitude towards Taku is hard to watch. The romance doesn't make much sense, but I do like that this film avoids the typical cliches of romance movies, and tackles the style in a way that feels more raw, and more like how real life would probably play out, with all the awkward misunderstandings. When they get home from Tokyo, Taku finds that Yutaka has confessed his love to Ritaku, only to be turned down. Taku tells Ritaku that she's the worst, and then she slaps him. That's when I knew this film was not a kid's movie. And then Taku turns around and slaps her back, and that's when I extra knew this is not a kid's movie. I mean, the violence is pretty tame, and there's really no physically explicit scenes of romance. Uh, Yutaku and Taku get into a fist fight over some misunderstanding with Rikaku. Taku tries to stick up with Rikaku when she's accused of flirting with some girl's boyfriend, but then she slaps him and runs away. So for a romance movie, there is very little physical contact. The most contact we see between characters comes in the form of smacks. We transport back to the present, where Taku and Yutaka are hanging out. It turns out Yutaku got in a fistfight with Taku back then because Taku didn't express his true feelings for Ritaku for the sake of protecting Yutaka's feelings for her. Um, and then if we go back to the train station 
where the movie started in Tokyo, and Taku realizes the girl across the platform is Rotaku. And then he realizes he's been in love with her all these years. The end. So yeah, there's a lot of scenes of miscommunication and handling raging emotions in a poor manner. Even though the film was made in the 90s, it feels very relatable to how kids might act today, even before social media. There's kids struggling with their hormones and emotions, boys commenting on a well-endowed student's uh, breast size, and girls talking about their periods and a drinking party. Like I mentioned, this isn't exactly a film aimed at children, but rather people who have already grown up and lived through relatable experiences. Even though the film is set in Japan in the 90s, I can relate to the drama based on remembering conflicts I observed from my own high school experiences in the United States. As far as drama is concerned, nothing especially noteworthy happens. Some criticisms against this movie is that the plot feels pointless. But in high school, everything felt like a life or death situation. Petty stuff that wouldn't likely bother someone as an adult feels so important in high school. If a friend passes you in the hall without saying hello, it might feel like a bomb had just demolished all those years that went into that friendship. But this friend ignoring you might just be stressed out or simply didn't notice you, even if he was looking right at you. Humans are fallible and fickle, but we have to try to learn how to be patient with each other. On the topic of the art and music in this film, the soundtrack is both playful and mysterious. Flutes flirt along the scenes of awkward adolescence. There's some fun jazzy qualities to this soundtrack too. The soap opera story seems more suited to live action than anime. Animation after all excels at depicting the impossible, or at least pushing reality just a little bit further than we see on a day to day basis. The art team took many location photographs to create an extremely authentic depiction of Kochi Prefecture. Background artists painstakingly rendered the details of the photographs into background art. The animation style itself is rather safe and stiff, though the art quality remains above average for a TV film. The most stylized aspect of the art is the way shadows were painted. There's a strong contrast between light and dark. The shadows feel heavy. Ocean Waves was a risky anime to make. It was a risk considering the subject matter, the crazy six month timeline, and the fact that the youngest and least experienced members of Studio Ghibli were tasked with directing their first feature length film without the guidance of either Hayao Miyazaki or Takahata. The film went both over budget and over schedule. Some people might find this movie kind of boring, but I kind of like boring things. So I'd give this movie a 10 out of 10. And then, well, okay. And then my interpretation of this film is that, well, the film doesn't have a whole lot of ocean waves. It doesn't have, for a film called Ocean Waves, it doesn't have a whole lot of ocean or waves. But I think Ocean Waves is a metaphor for the turbulent emotions inside Rikaku or of adolescence itself. Waves can thrash about violently, knocking ships over, but waves can also become soft and gentle when they reach the shoreline. Rikaku appears to be arrogant and aggressive. Only when she reaches out to Taku does she become soft and vulnerable, even if only for short moments. And it doesn't take much from Taku to upset the whirlpool of unbridled emotion inside Rikaku. Ocean Waves also represents the cyclical nature of life. We never know when something from our past will wash up to our present. And this concludes my review of Ocean Waves. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, let me know if you've seen Ocean Waves and what I should review next. And don't forget to subscribe and check out the other stuff on my channel like music vids and animation tutorials.